And Syria is just one example. American war crimes has its own Wikipedia page. Torture, extrajudicial killings, illegal detentions, they've done it all. Let me start with Iraq. Who can forget the Abu Ghraib prison? This is where America perfected their war crimes. Prisoners were tortured, raped, sodomized, and killed. All of this is documented. In fact, it was authorized by the U.S. government. Their Justice Department released a memo before the Iraq war. It's called the Torture Memos. What did this document say? One, that U.S. officials cannot be charged with war crimes. And two, that enhanced interrogation techniques can be used on prisoners. What are these enhanced techniques? Basically a clever way of saying torture. And two pictures sum up what America did in Abu Ghraib. Here's one of them. The prisoner is made to stand on a box. His head is covered and his fingers are connected to an electric wire. Do you know what his interrogators told him? If you fall off the box, you will be electrocuted. That's what he was told. Here's picture number two. It's even worse. Naked prisoners have been piled on top of each other. Their heads are covered and posing behind them are U.S. soldiers, all smiles. This was standard practice, apparently. The CIA regularly clicked naked pictures of their prisoners. The idea was to strip them of all dignity. Many prisoners died during such so-called interrogations. Many are still languishing in so-called U.S. black sites. The people who did this are not soldiers, they're criminals. But the United States continues to protect them. Let me give you an example. In 2005, a U.S. battalion in Iraq was hit by a roadside bomb in a place called Haditha. One soldier was killed, one soldier. The same day, this battalion marched into a neighborhood. They shot and killed 24 women and children. Do you know what the battalion's leader said? Shoot first, ask questions later. And do you know what his punishment was? 90 days in jail plus a pay cut. A pay cut. That's the punishment for taking 24 innocent lives. Here's another example. This is from 2007. A private security company was escorting a U.S. diplomatic convoy in Baghdad. They say they were ambushed. In, re in response, they killed 17 innocent Iraqi citizens. Four of the employees were tried and convicted. But in, de in December last year, Donald Trump, then president, pardoned them. So they're free men now. The fact is America will do anything to protect its war criminals. They will find legal loopholes. They will use their diplomatic power. They will even build a military base on an isolated island to hide their crimes. I'm talking about the infamous Guantanamo Bay detention camp or Gitmo for short. Since 2002, 780 people have been detained here. No charges, no trial, no lawyers. 731 prisoners have been transferred out. 39 still remain and 9 died in custody. Gitmo is a monument to America's ruthless crimes. Prisoners say they were tortured with broken glass, strangled with barbed wires, forcefully injected with drugs and repeatedly raped. Remember who's doing this. The supposed human rights champion. The self-proclaimed guardian of freedom. They did the same in Afghanistan. We know the Bagram Air Base is as the crown jewel of the U.S. operation, but that was not always the case. Bagram also houses a detention camp. Prisoners were chained to the ceiling. They were beaten, sexually assaulted, and killed. Then you have a list of illegal operations. The Kandahar Massacre, 16 civilians dead, including nine children. The Maywan district murders, three civilians dead. The Kabul airstrike, nine civilians dead. This last one happened this year. An entire family was wiped out in one strike. What's the punishment for such mistakes? Apparently nothing. The Pentagon says no U.S. soldier will be punished. No jail, no demotion, not even pay cuts. And frankly, we should not be surprised. America's drone strikes are among the biggest war crimes in human history. The president orders, the Pentagon pushes a button, and innocent civilians are massacred halfway around the world. Let me show you the numbers. Since 9-11, the U.S. has conducted 100,000 drone strikes. Do you know how many people have they killed? At least 22,000 civilians. The worst estimate is 48,000. Could any other country get away with these crimes? No, they would be sanctioned, at the very least dragged to court. And that's the other issue. The U.S. is yet to join the International Criminal Court, which means the ICC, International Criminal Court, cannot prosecute U.S. soldiers. Then who can? American courts.
And we all know how that ends. Even if US courts convict a soldier, their president ends up pardoning him. He becomes a decorated war hero instead of a war criminal. Hollywood makes movies on them. Late night shows interview them. This is the reality of the United States. The American war machine is actually a war crime machine. It's about time someone called them out. US soldiers arrive in foreign lands as messengers of peace and freedom, but they leave as merchants of death and destruction. So if Joe Biden wants to talk democracy and human rights, maybe start with your own military. Join the International Criminal Court. Subject your soldiers to independent probes. Until then, do not take the moral high ground because the mass graves in Afghanistan, Syria, Libya and Iraq disagree. Oh. Maybe Zelensky has an excuse. His political career is just five years old. Multiply by 10, that's Joe Biden's career for you. 50 years in politics, but all that experience has mattered little. Biden is still stumbling his way through this crisis. Wednesday was another example. Reporters asked him a simple question, a yes or no question. Do you think Vladimir Putin is a war criminal? Listen to what happened next. <laughs> How decisive is that? Exactly what you want from a wartime leader. Did somebody nudge Biden to change his position? Did he not hear the question properly? Or is this another classic Biden faux pas? Either way, the White House was forced to clean up. They say Biden was speaking from his heart. The president's remarks speak for themselves. Uh, he was speaking from his heart and speaking from what he's seen on television, which is barbaric actions by a brutal dictator uh, through his invasion of a foreign country. Let's address the basics first. Who decides whether someone is a war criminal? The United Nations has a court for that. It's called the ICC, the International Criminal Court. It's based in The Hague. This court can label someone a war criminal. Question number two, what constitutes a war crime? There is no fixed list, but most of the offenses are drawn from the Geneva Convention. I'll list some of them out for you. Targeting civilians, targeting non-military assets, using human shields taking hostages, using banned weapons, all of these are war crimes. Now looking at that list, Russia is a prime candidate. They have targeted hospitals, schools and shelters, residential complexes have been bombed. Technically, these are war crimes. Question number three, is Putin a war criminal? Vladimir Putin is the president of Russia, which also makes him commander in chief of the Russian armed forces. So he does share responsibility. Perhaps he ordered these illegal strikes or at the very least, he knew about them. So the allegation is certainly warranted. Question number four, can Putin be prosecuted? Tribunals have prosecuted leaders before, like the Nuremberg trials or the Tokyo trials. But Russia does not recognize the ICC's jurisdiction. So Putin is not going to be prosecuted, nor will he send his generals to the stand. So these allegations are mostly symbolic, and America should know that. On Tuesday, the US Senate passed a resolution against Putin. What does it say? It says that Putin is a war criminal and that the ICC must immediately probe his actions in Ukraine. How brave of the senators, except America itself does not recognize The Hague. In fact, they have gone a step ahead. Let me introduce the American Service Members' Protection Act, a.k.a. The Hague Invasion Act. It was signed by George Bush in the year 2002. What does it say? Now listen to this carefully. The ASPA authorizes the president to use, and I'm quoting, all means necessary and appropriate to bring about the release of any U.S. or allied personnel being detained or imprisoned by, on behalf of, or at the request of the International Criminal Court. All means necessary, and that could mean anything. This law empowers America to invade The Hague, hence the name, The Hague Invasion Act. And I'm not saying the U.S. will actually do it. But imagine the audacity. Washington will go to any lengths to protect its war criminals. And by the way, the list is long. The man who signed this law, George Bush, is one of them. His war on terror killed thousands of innocent civilians. He authorized torture. He illegally detained hundreds of people, but The Hague won't touch him. Because if they do, America could invade. The man who succeeded Bush is no better. Barack Obama launched 563 drone strikes, 563. Around 800 civilians were killed in those so-called precision strikes. 
Again, no accountability. Now, don't get me wrong. None of this justifies what Vladimir Putin is doing. His crimes in Chechnya and Ukraine are equally bad. We are simply pointing out the obvious, a broken system, a system that lets powerful war criminals get away. We cannot let superpowers pick and choose which parts of the international system they like. Just think about it. America and Russia are both United Nations Security Council members. Yet both of them do not recognize the ICC. What's the point of the system? We don't know how this war will end or whether Russia will be held accountable. But here's what we do know. The post-World War II system needs to be reformed. If not, more George Bushes will emerge, more Putins will be emboldened. And the world will simply be a mute spectator. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.